these two guys have Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. Yes, it is a reckless speculation Thursday here. It's also a technical meltdown Thursday this the morning. Internet for- gremlins <laughs> are loose. I don't even think it's like I think it's yeah, something it's beyond the internet gremlins. It's um I don't know, but Judd, if Judd and I just like fade into the abyss, then you and Declan can talk as long as you want to. Do you and Judd have any enemies? Thursday. Could somebody be oh. like backstabbing the two of you somehow? <laughs> The list is long, Darren. I don't know where we'd start. Yeah. The answer is yes. Yes, we do have we do have enemies. Um, but uh, this is Darren Doogie Wolfson's Day to Shine here, Reckless Speculation Thursday. Oh, I don't know about Shining, but Judd. I'm here. Well, we are uh, we're excited to talk some Vikings here because it is the first preseason game tonight. You know, here's where we should start. So Ivan Pace has sort of taken the the local vikings community by storm here right he's had a great training camp he's getting national steam now i saw peter schrager on good morning football rave about how ivan pace is having an incredible camp in minnesota so i guess what do you make can we go from ivan pace being undrafted to then getting first team reps and getting national steam to him not making the roster it it feels like almost a lock at this point but what are you sort of seeing and hearing well, it reminds me, Judd, who was the safety? Was it Kyrie's A. Bear? Oh, was that God. his name? Yes, that's the way back machine. That is the way, way back machine yeah, down in that, Mankato. That's I feel the like you, around. You were doogie. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> you were really doogie back then. I was legitimately doogie. I was still finger painting way back then. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, think about it. Like, it was about this time, many, many, many years ago. Declan, maybe you can Google that name. What is it? I'm curious what year yeah, check it was. Check what, what's it, what's even the name? A bear. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll do it. A bear. I'll do it's, it. You're it asking H-E-B, a lot. H-E-B, H-E-B. Or how do we spell it? I got it, you guys. Dukes, keep so going. So it was probably like this time many, many years ago, right? Like August 10th, where like that same conversation was being had. Can this guy who is shining every day, maybe not getting quite the national headlines because social media wasn't a thing back then, but hey, how could this guy not make the roster? But yes, I imagine at this point, just based on the investment they made in Ivan Pace Jr., $236,000 outbid the Tennessee Titans, who also made a very aggressive bid. They wanted to secure his services. I would imagine at this point that they won't roll the dice trying to get him through waivers, that he does indeed, especially with some special teams flexibility, being able to play on special teams, that I don't know if he's like a 100% lock, but it is trending in the direction of him certainly making the 53-man roster. April of 2002, Kyrie's a bear who is now in his 40s signed. So that is a quite a pull by Doogie right there. Um, So I I think that the flip side, though, to this conversation that I I find to be pretty intriguing is this. And this has been something that uh, Makadak has been, I don't want to say harping on, but certainly pointing out for a good, I don't know, months to a year, which is this. The... Ivan Pace Jr. story, which looks like a great story, is a little bit of an indictment of where Brian Asamoah is, though, too, because Brian Asamoah started camp with the ones. Like, there was fully, uh, um, I think, a thought process that Brian Asamoah was going to be Brian Flores' guy alongside Jordan Hicks, Darren. And um, Brian Asamoah has now been with the twos more. And I'm not saying the Pace is not playing well. He probably is. But I think we also have to, to Phil's point, what wonder if the assumption that Brian Osimo was just going to step in and be fine was a bit of a stretch and that there's some frustration maybe on the learning scale from Brian Flores and the coaching staff. Yes, agree with all that, Judd. But one month from today, Vikings Buccaneers, U.S. Bank Stadium, my money is on number 33, Brian Osamoa, getting first team reps, being on the field for a lot of snaps. But yes, I mean, the transition to Brian's defense, Flores' defense, Everything, right? Year one to year two, you're expected to make this massive leap. There's just so much going on. I mean, I remember having a conversation day one or day two of training camp with Brian. He was telling me, hey, you know, I'm still trying to figure all this out, even though from mid-June to mid-July, you know, technically our vacation, but I was digging deep on trying to still learn this defense. But he told me, hey, on July 27th or July 28th, 
he was still figuring things out. So I think he's still doing a lot of thinking, not necessarily just outright playing, but I think he's going to figure it out. He's a very popular guy, by the way, in that locker room. Not that that means much when it comes to who will get first team reps on September 10th, but my money is still on Brian Asamoah figuring it out. Now, will he even get any snaps tonight? He's been dealing with a little bit of an injury. Judd, you were there on Tuesday night. I wasn't there, but he sat out. My understanding correct? He sat out some of the team drills, maybe did some individual no stuff. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Or no right. work. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You know, one, one thing we haven't really touched, I don't even think we've talked about this on Purple Daily, so it's our fault if we've skipped over this, but a couple weeks ago, right before training camp, a couple reports came out about Kirk Cousins spending 30 minutes addressing the locker room and giving a speech that was classified as riveting to those who were in the room, just talking about sort of, you know, his journey in the NFL and, you know, how important these moments are because they can be fleeting. You know, it would it would be interesting if um, if we could have ran that back to last year so that the Netflix cameras could have caught some of it and we could actually be in the room for it. But um, what did what did you guys make of that when you saw it? We'll start with Doogie here. That Kirk Cousins is now giving riveting speeches to to rile up the crew before the 2023 season begins. I think he's actually done some of this stuff. It just hasn't gained headlines, Phil. But I think he's done some of these things, even going back to his time with Washington. I remember, I can't remember if it was RG3, a conversation I had with him or Joe Theismann, but I remember hearing something along these lines from one of those two individuals at some point in the last couple of years when talking with those guys specifically about Kirk. But it also signals that I think coming off the Netflix series, just absorbing all this, trying to figure out if this could be it here in Minnesota, what does the future hold? I mean, I think he's processing a lot of different things right now. Plus, I think he is, Judd, I know it's not necessarily his duty, but I do think he's trying to pave a nice little path for Jaron Hall, trying to show the rookie from BYU the way to do some things, right, and just try to educate him. And so I wasn't, like, overly shocked, Phil, when I saw that, just because I think he's done some of that. Maybe I'll ask him next time I see him, but I think he's done some of that in the past. So O'Connell was also asked about the speech after it came out, and O'Connell actually said, I believe that Kirk was originally going to, and I think th this is what Doogie is talking about, Kirk was originally going to address the offense, and he's like, I, I want to talk to the offense. And O'Connell's like, oh, no, 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 you're talking to all 90 guys, or in, in this case, all 89 guys. And so I think what this shows too, because, yeah, I think Kirk is always – like Kirk has always done Kirk like things. And I, I say that in a good way, but I think what this shows again is the partnership of the coach and quarterback where O'Connell's like, I'm going to have you address the entire team. Cause if you've got something to say, and the other thing that Kirk has become acutely aware of, and he should is this, he is an aging quarterback who has never been past the first round of the playoffs and is par partially why he got the uh, full time body coach for himself like at his season opening press conference with us phil he essentially said if i don't do everything i can to make myself as uh, successful as popular or as possible to stick around shame on me and so i think a lot of this also goes to as far as addressing the team about what this could mean i think a lot of it goes to uh, um an obvious recognition that he is aging and the clock is ticking and like if he's ever going to get to where he desires to go, you know, everyone has to appreciate the opportunity here because Kirk is certainly, you know, not 25 at this point and that there's only X amount of time left. And I do believe that he wants to play as long as possible. Well, and he wants to play here. Like, was it you, Judd, who threw the question to Mark Wilf on Tuesday? doesn't matter who asked the question, but... You know, I saw oh, yeah, that no, there were some headlines from Mark, you know, pretty much saying, hey, we're all about 2023. Yep. Sidetracked the question. I wasn't shocked. Mark Wilf just doesn't really answer questions directly. So I wasn't shocked by his comments on Tuesday, but I saw we're that he gained focused a few on what we headlines. Can control. Yeah, focused on what we can control in 2023. Correct. But there content. still is, like, there absolutely is a scenario where Kirk is the Vikings quarterback in oh, 2024. Yeah. Like I saw, I think Dan Graziano of ESPN put something on ESPN Insider the other day. So it gained some national steam Tuesday night into Wednesday about Kirk's future. I don't think based on what Mark Wilf said on Tuesday 
that anything has changed in that regard, I guess is what I'm getting at. Yeah, it's I, I think it's likely at this point that he's the quarterback in 2024. Because we don't first of all, we don't know what the other options are. The 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 I guess if you could pick the perfect option, it would be somehow land one of the top two quarterbacks in the draft, but they're not going to be bad enough to come anywhere near. Do they have the draft capital to trade up that high? Are teams that are drafting first and second even willing to move off those picks? So without some sort of concrete plan B, he, I think it's the overwhelming favorite that he is the quarterback for the Vikings, however it works out contractually in 2024 right now. Well, I mean, heck, like this time last year, if I had told you that Aaron Rodgers would be the Jets quarterback now, what would you have told me, right? So inevitably... Some storyline is going to emerge. Is it Kyler Murray? Is it somebody else? So I don't know about overwhelming, Phil, but I'm just saying, like, there absolutely is a scenario. Undoubtedly, there is a scenario where Cousins is this team's quarterback, not only in 24, but beyond 24. So I, I think the most um, interesting thing about this entire discussion, guys, is is this. I think if, if you look at what Mark Wells said about Kirk, which is a very... Uh. Oh no! Internet oh, gremlins. A lot of people would say minutes. right now. Yeah, a lot of people would say this is a beautiful thing that somehow <laughs> Judd has been muted. Wait, Judd, can you? Okay, can you pantomime the point you were making with hand signals? <laughs> <laughs> Mime your point. It's going to yeah. be a new podcast be, here uh, on Score North. I love it. Phil, are you with me, though, that inevitably, though, some storyline is going to emerge quarterback-wise at some point in the next five, six, seven months, where if the Vikings need to, they can pivot in that direction. I mean, I threw yeah, out but, loosely Kyler Murray just because Arizona, in many ways, I'm is out. a dumpster fire. But yeah, and I'm out hey, on Kyler I think I'd rather have Kirk Cousins in 24 and in 25 than Kyler Murray. But maybe it's somebody else that something emerges. But I'm with you. The Vikings are too good to be in a position to grab the USC quarterback or yeah, the North I'm, Carolina I'm, quarterback. I'm, that just I'm doesn't think, seem in the realm of possibilities. You know, because if you're the Vikings, you would, I, I think you would, if, if he's productive again and he's healthy and maybe he takes a step forward in you know, some certain areas, I think you would have two other options that could be tantalizing. Number one would be an absolute bona fide 21-year-old, 22-year-old franchise quarterback that you have a chance to get, which we kind of laid out how hard that path could be. Or there's another experienced veteran quarterback that somehow contractually and fit-wise and everything makes your team better than a 35-year-old Kirk Cousins would make your team. And you bring up, like, th that would be like the Kyler Murray bin. I don't want a guy that I have to twist his arm to watch film because there's a new Xbox game coming out. So him specifically, I've soured on over the last 12 months. But you're right. Every year there is a Derek Carr situation or an Aaron Rodgers situation Maybe Tom Brady at age 47 gets the itch to uh, sell his stake in the Raiders and come back and play. I don't know, but I just think right now, unless he dive bombs and has like an age cliff situation or unless he wants to test the market and make the most money he can, you know, I need to see what the other options are before I say that he's not the quarterback in 2024. Yeah, those two scenarios don't seem real likely just based on some of the ask, you know, the dialogue between Cousins' camp and Quasey going back even to February at the Combine. But I just don't think he's asking for the moon now. Hey, from a Players Association standpoint, it's not like he's willing to take some sort of significant pay cut, but I just don't think he's looking for a sizable raise. And him falling off a cliff, Phil, that would really, really surprise me. With the great tackles, with the receiving options, second year in this system, the synergy with Kevin O'Connell, the Judd, when his mic worked a few minutes ago, touched on with Kirk addressing the team. I would be very, very surprised if Cousins has a bad year. Right? I mean, is that how you would define falling off a cliff? How would yeah, you, it you would term a bad. It would be like I'd a like be, a like a Matt Ryan kind of a situation. Yeah, I'd be you know? really really surprised. I really would. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. He's back here. He is back. Does his microphone work? We can hear his lips. I think it does. Hey! I, I think it does. This is the <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. My connections are all good. I don't know what the hell is going on. I hate technology well, we, sometimes. We will have dog. to talk with you're the aren't you the head of technology for Score North? I feel like the buck stops with you here to fix all of our problems. So. <laughs> uh yeah, I hope not. If, if I actually I am Score you, North you know who is gonna need? be going out of business soon. 
Who do you we know need? who we need? Finch Home Solutions right now. Yeah. That's who we need. Why don't you Tony. tell the audience? Oh, Help that's us. a great point because, yep, exactly right. Look at that van right there. What does that van mean? What does that van mean? It means that in a pinch, you're going to call Finch for any electrical needs that you have oh. at your home. Cody and his team, yes, they are big fans of the purple, but they're also big fans of making sure that the electronics in your house work. And we're talking about anything from the big picture stuff. I'm talking about rewiring your entire house if it's an old home to changing a outlet from a two-prong to a three-prong. Finch Home Solutions can do it all. No project too big, no project too small. They do fantastic work. They're going to get it done. And um, and here's the best part. When you call them, they're going to come out fast. They're going to be efficient. They're going to get it taken care of. How do you do this? It's this simple. It's a phone call away. 612-357-2604, finchhomesolutions.com. Just fill out a form. And of course, Either way, please tell them that the guys from Score North told you that the scoop was to call Finch Home Solutions. Yeah, the scoop, which is presented also by our friends at Minnesota Fat Loss. MN Fat Loss. Doogie's back from his vacation. You know, you can live your life. You can go on a vacation, have a couple meals, and maybe fall outside the parameters, and then get right back on track like you are this week, Doogie. Absolutely, Phil. Heck, even a couple of dole beverages, right? I mean, I had a good time in the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee last week. But now back going strong thanks to MNFatLoss.com, down 16 pounds in just over five and a half weeks. All about losing pounds before I lose my hair. All about being energized. Late night Vikings game tonight, right? Need to stay up and watch those third and fourth stringers at close to midnight central tonight. I'm all about having the energy to stay up thanks to MNFatLoss.com. Dot com. Find out the secret to losing up to one pound of fat every day. No exercise required, although I get my steps in on a regular basis. There's no counting points. There's no prepackaged meals. No hypnosis. Nothing crazy. MN Fat Loss's unique weight loss program makes it easy to lose weight, get healthy, and get your energy back naturally, safely, and effectively. Many patients lose 20 to 30 pounds in about a month or two, looking forward to hitting that 20-pound mark in the very, very near future. For your free private weight loss consultation, call 763-312-7600, 763-312-7600, or schedule online, mnfatloss.com. That's mnfatloss.com. Dr. Adam Schatzko, D.C. Results may vary. But, yeah, so far so good, Philip. Nice. Hey, before we move on to uh, other Vikings things and whatever else uh, you guys want to get into, Judd, before you are so rudely cut off by the technology <laughs> gremlin, do you have any other thoughts on Kirk Cousins going into the final year of his contract here? Judd, you're mute. You are Judd, you're you're muted. muted no, you're you're muted. This is locally now. muted. Oh, all right. Yeah, that was me. That was me. Okay, everyone just stop, okay? I yes, thought you were a... screwing with us for a second. No, I thought no. it was too. No, no, no. I'm, I, I, just, you know what? You, gonna you know what? It. I'm going to try and <laughs> gather myself and it. make my point and then move on. <laughs> hopefully I don't mute myself and hopefully the mic doesn't. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> just kidding. I muted you that time. I was just messing with you. <laughs> oh, God. I saw that. This is very upsetting. This is very, very upsetting. I'm this is a pro- this. this is a professional sports media platform yep. right here. Yep. At Score Damn North. right <laughs> it is. Damn right it is. You know what? No, just move on. Screw it. You're good. Okay. All right. What other Vikings are you with us, Judd? That in it's bank? in the realm of possibilities, big time in the realm of possibilities. That Kirk Cousins is the Vikings quarterback, not only in 2024 but 2025 as well. Yeah, I think what I think what they need to see is the most important thing is what do the other contracts look like? Because as I pointed out yesterday, Justin Jefferson is going to make um, QB type of cash, and I think part of it is going to be what's Kirk, Kirk's ask. So, like, because at some point in time, just from a salary cap standpoint, Dukes. You can only do so much. So, yes, I think it's very possible. And, you know, Phil has alluded to Kirk as he ages, perhaps taking less, which I think he could definitely be back then. But I think it's going to come back to what the Cousins camp, once we know what the Jefferson contract is especially, I think it's going to come back to what the Cousins camp wants. And if they try to break the bank one last time, I don't know the Vikings can fit that in in a cap that's going to have a receiver making as much as Justin. And I'm not going to be the one to argue against Justin Jefferson breaking the bank. Sorry. Absolutely not. No. No. But, I mean, it's so fascinating. Just not only Kirk, but all the guys in the final year of their contracts. I mean, just think about the stake that so many guys have in this particular season. Fascinating to me. What uh, what else do you have your eye on here? What other sort of, like, preseason-related 
things or any other Viking scoops before we uh Well, I mean, the questions I get topics. more often than not, Phil, I mean, what's up with Dalton Reisner? What's up with the cornerback mm-hmm. Darby? You know, nothing new. I mean, you know, I'm a broken record, but, you know, the ship hasn't sailed to use the cliche on either. But at this point, the Vikings have not extended an actual contract offer to either. And at some point in the very near future, Dalton Reisner is going to say, okay, there's some other teams calling. Okay, let me go take a visit. It's time for me to sign. It's not like he needs four to five to six weeks, especially in a system that he's familiar with, to get ready for opening weekend or maybe soon thereafter. But it's not like he's going to wait until August 31st to sign, right? So the clock is ticking, but until he's off the board, there's still a chance. But, hey, the Vikings have to make an offer. And if they haven't made an offer at this point, it looks like, you know, it's going to be status quo. But those are the questions I get more than anything. I mean, in terms of tonight, you know, I don't know how much I'm looking forward to tonight, but you know, I'll be curious to see Brandon Powell v. Jalen Rager. I mean, I think Powell's got the leg up in terms of winning that punt return job, but I'll be curious to watch those two guys. Certainly Ivan Pace Jr., some of the young DBs, Makai Blackman, you know, the limited snaps that Jordan Addison gets. So, you know, there'll be some things I'll keep an eye on. Certainly the BYU quarterback, the rookie kid as well. But yeah, I mean, otherwise, you know, hey, you know, nothing – Nothing crazy is going on in Egan. I mean, there's enough storylines to keep us interested, but there's nothing, you know, way out of whack. Uh, can you uh, can you indulge me specifically in uh, a little Timberwolves Anthony Edwards speculation here for a second? So, saw a note on Twitter. I don't know, like over the weekend sometime, that uh, some of Anthony Edwards' Team USA teammates were going to go to a concert of some kind, or it was like some sort of I can't remember who the artist was, but that he skipped out on it so that he could get shots up at like midnight or whatever. He wanted he wanted a late night solo practice to keep grinding his game. What are we hearing about Anthony Edwards this offseason? Because it kind of, you know, it's easy to just put out videos and whatever, but everything you see is that he is looking to take another step forward. He's obsessed with getting better. He seems like sort of the centerpiece and the heartbeat of the World Cup team. He's in the starting lineup now. He's around Eric Spolstra and Steve Kerr and all these basketball luminaries. Um, We've seen before, go look at like the Redeem team in 2008. That's Olympics versus World Cup. But a lot of those players, Dwayne Wade, even Kobe Bryant with the second act, used it as a springboard to the next phase of their career. So uh, what's the vibe around Anthony Edwards from what you've sort of gathered this summer? The vibe is fantastic, right? Even with the charges dropped for throwing the chair in oh, Denver right. in late April. He got fined last 50 month. grand for that yesterday. By fined the way. 50 grand. So that's now in the rear view mirror. There hasn't been anything crazy like, you know, last summer on his Instagram story or anything like that. So it's full steam ahead. You know, at 22 years old, he just turned 22 the other day. It's all about being all NBA. It's all about being one of the best players in the league making noise in the postseason, being higher than an eight seed. Yeah, I mean, all the all the accolades coming from, you know, Vegas, you know, even watching the game, the exhibition game against Puerto Rico the other day, Phil, you're right. I mean, you know, I mean, it just – it looks like he is uber locked in that he is the face of the franchise. Now, can Cat ultimately accept that? That remains to be seen. He certainly seemed to accept it when he came back from the injury late last season. But as we move forward – That will be an intriguing storyline, but this is all about Ant, his ascension, and he's going to keep getting better, better, and better. Wolves fans should be forever grateful to Gerson, Rosas, Ryan Saunders, and others when they had a decision to make, okay, do we go Ball, do we go Wiseman, or do we go Anthony Edwards? They chose very, very wisely. Hey, Dukes, on Cat as well, um, do you think that, cause I, I, I do think that you, you're right to throw it out that it, he might struggle, uh, not being the face of this team, but do you think if he does accept it and he accepts that Ant is quote unquote, the man, do you think that could actually make cat a more effective and better player? If you dial down and he accepts it, the pressure of, of what comes with being perceived as, as the face of the franchise and instead can just become a very important part of the franchise. I think the pressure is always going to be there, Jed. When you are a super max player, right, whether you're the 1B, the 2A, whatever it is, right, you know, we can argue alpha, 
you know, not alpha, all that, he's still going to be facing all sorts of pressure, right? When you talk about his 16-game sure. playoff track record, when in eight of the 16, Phil, you know the numbers more specifically than I, but in half of his playoff games, you know, not really a no-show, but close to a no-show, right? He's also had some really good playoff performances, but he's laid an egg in a bunch of playoff games. That narrative is always going to be there, whether we perceive Ant being the face of the franchise or not. As long as he's making the money he's making, the expectations are going to be incredibly high. He's going to hear the noise. He's going to feel that sort of pressure. That's why, to me, I still think it can be a very fascinating 2024 summer. That depending on how the season goes, do they blow this up this time next year or, you know, 10 months from now, not necessarily August of 2024, but more like early July, late June of 2024. Is that when a Carl Anthony Towns mm-hmm. trade happens? Even with the bloated contract, as hard as it is to trade a contract like that, it's not impossible. That's why I wonder if we're trending in that direction. But it was never going to be a case of that happening now. Like, he was never getting traded. I'm just telling you. It never has come up that he was going to get traded this summer. Yeah. You think Rudy Gobert, if I set the over-under at .53 three-pointers made in the NBA season, it's it seems like he's legitimately trying to add this to his arsenal. He's been practicing it. He hit a three in the international competition. Do you think Rudy Gobert comes back and hits the over on .53s made with the Timberwolves? All right, so one make. Figure he plays not 82, but plays somewhere in the vicinity of 70-ish games. So I need one made three in 70 games. I think he's going to take some. I think he's going to take some. Ooh, is this a write that down? Ooh. Ooh. I mean, he is who he is, Phil, at this point. I mean... You know, in his 30s, it's not like he's going to transform the kind of Dude, there's, player. There's been some he guys is. like Brooke, Brooke Lopez started shooting three he did. in his career. Yeah, you know, no, there are examples. Open. Yeah, I just I don't think Rudy Gobert's turning into Brooke Lopez, but sure, Brooke Lopez would be the extreme example, right? Just the way he transformed his game once he got to to Milwaukee. Yeah, you can sell me on taking the over that he makes Dude, one. Your guy, Mike Muscala, yeah. your guy Mike Muscala started started hitting Texted threes a with him the other ago. day. Yeah, ran in him oh. the other day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's excited to be in Washington. Yeah, a name drop on Mike Muscala. Dude, big time. Oh, yeah. That's how you. Yeah. That's how you stay in the league for like eight years. I mean, he's been in the league for almost a decade, right? Ten years. So, yeah, ten years. Yeah, he'll be with there Tyus in Washington. Yeah, he's with the Wizards now. Yeah. How about that, man? What a sneaky, a sneaky ten-year career for a Gold Prisbilla had like a thirteen-year NBA career too. Correct. So, I mean, you know, and now Prisbilla, you want to feel threes. old. He's got a junior, or is it a sophomore in high school? He's got a 10th or 11th grade, or maybe even a kid entering his 12th grade year. Anyway, wow. getting some college offers. That he's got a son in the Milwaukee suburbs, somewhere he, in Wisconsin. He won't be a gopher, we know that. No, he's not going to be a gopher. No, no, he's not quite a high wow. major player, but he's Trevor a legit Winter, college player. Yeah, Joel Prisbella, well, all Chris their kids are... ditched us. We're still pissed at Prisbella himself. Why Just are we walked pissed out at Prisbella? Walked out on us. He he came for a year. It was kind of a train wreck. He's like, this is weird. There's sanctions and stuff. You know, we get so sensitive. AJ Przinsky. What did he ever do to us besides mash? You know, I think we need to get over ourselves. I think Joel left because he he found the scholastic side to be more difficult than he expected. I think he just went to class. Uh, Look at his career earnings. He was a lot like me. Look at Prisbilla's career earnings. I mean, it helps when you're, you know, a top 15-ish pick, but like you look at his career numbers compared to his career earnings. I mean, he's the ultimate example of a guy that maximized yeah. his earning potential. Dude, Put look, it that I, way. I mean, Cole Aldridge had like a twenty million dollar contract at the end too. I mean, if you basically if Cole's you're seven example, feet my tall guy. Yeah. and you can and you can hang out in a in a practice as a seven footer, the baseline starts at like thirty million dollars career earnings. So correct. Yeah, I mean, Joel is north guys. of that. Yeah, Cole would be north of that as well. Two other Wolves notes. Look for their City Edition jersey to be unveiled in the coming days. And yeah. the schedule is about one to two weeks away from being unveiled. So we will know the Wolves' 23-24 schedule here. You know, put it this way, before the State Fair begins. So are, are the um, multicolored ones that they unveiled last year, I thought, as their city, are those done? Yes, so they changed the City Edition jersey on a yearly basis. So there will be a new City Edition. I guess I don't know, Judd. I could have, I could have asked on that. Maybe that's like know, my all these teams stuff. seem to have like four or five jerseys now. So maybe that's still yeah. in the arsenal, right? But yes, they are unveiling 
a new city edition jersey for the 23-24 season here in the coming days. Awesome. There he is, Darren Doogie Wilson from the 5 Eyewitness News Sports Department here with scoops and a little reckless speculation Thursday just between friends. Thanks for Are you done with the Twins, Phil? Oh, Judd's done with the Twins. Declan and I are like counting down the magic number. I'm, I'm disgusted. No, I, was, I was at the I'm, Saints game. It was great. I'm disgusted by him. I'm disgusted by the fact that they cannot uh, take success and build on that. I'm disgusted by the fact that Why they're in they, first because place. Because they lost a game and, yesterday. I think they're going to be They lost two consecutive games fine. to Detroit. They're under 500 against Detroit. They got swept by Kansas well, Judd, City. Okay. I am done. First of all. The, the first pitcher they lost to was one of the best pitchers in the league. So, like that last night's loss was bad, but it's also baseball. So, by the way, the on Eduardo Rodriguez, I, like, I didn't mention this on Tuesday. Yeah, somebody had thrown his name out that there was some some last. Yeah, I guess going back to last Tuesday, Tuesday the first, so last week with the trade deadline, that his name somehow came up. Remember, he had some no trade power and all that. I just I don't sense it ever came close to Eduardo Rodriguez or the Twins being involved in a three team scenario. I don't remember if it was Eduardo Rodriguez landing here, any of that. But it, just, it was the Dodgers. I don't think he, it ever got off the ground. Well, yeah, I mean he turned down right. He, he had a chance it. to go to the Dodgers. Yeah, he loved and Detroit. he killed it. Right, but then there was also some scuttlebutt about the Twins being involved. Okay. Somehow I don't know if it was a three team scenario or if it just would have been Eduardo Rodriguez somehow ending up here with the Twins then moving one of their pending. Free agent starters, Sonny Gray or Kenta Maeda. Point is, my sense is it never got off the ground, right? So anything you saw out there about Eduardo Rodriguez potentially landing here or the Twins being involved in Rodriguez talks, it was it was nothing. Just put it that way. Straight BS is what it was. Well, right, I don't know dudes. about BS. I mean, you know, these teams throw BS. out all sorts of different scenarios and all that. So, I mean, I imagine that, you know, as, as Derek and Thad and those guys were, were in the war room, Right, last Monday and Tuesday, you know, being on the phone a bunch, text messaging, all that, that maybe some scenario came up, and I'm just saying it never came close to actually happening. So it was lies, is what you're saying. It was well, I don't lies. know about lies. But... No, it wasn't lies, but yeah. All right, boys. All right, dude. 21 Good days stuff, until man. Gophers football, one month until Vikings. Well, so yeah, love it. About. See ya. LFG. All right, there he is. Darren Doogie Wolfson, Five Eyewitness News, the Scoop Podcast here on uh, Mackie and Judd. All right, we made it. Judd only dropped off once, only muted himself once. I didn't drop off at all, unlike the the Royce train wreck. So you're, maybe we've made it through the. You're workout. fine now. You you sound this a is little great. bit different, but you're fine. Hey, your mic's Yo, a little processed. Yeah, I I'm the one with problems now. I gotta look. I'm working on it. Okay, I'm gonna come in today and get a temporary mic. I got a suggestion from you. Declan t- told me a place where I can get. I I think it's the mic. I I think it's just the mic because my cable is run, new. Man. My cable is new. My computer is new. I can't imagine. I mean, you're, you, you're throwing that microphone in your backpack, in your backpack. or training camp. You're going to U.S. Bank Stadium. You're, yeah. The yeah. X. You know, now, but would a mic cut places. off the it, it would cut the sound off. That that makes sense. That I, mean, I would if, just, the, if the mic has been thrown around like a rag doll, shorted. eventually, yes, it, it will. Uh, it and will it's crap been shorted out, out and stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Just, we're, we're, how old is that microphone? Four years. Had it. I've had it since we were sent home for the pandemic. Dude, that's a pretty good run for a That's mic. a really good run. Well, for I mic. have abused it. Y- yes. Like Declan's exactly right. I've abused it. It's gone to the X. It's gone to the Twins. It's gone to U.S. Bank Stadium. And like I put it in the back of my backpack and I don't like wrap it up like a baby in swaddling yeah, clothes. This, I just this is, throw it um, in there. This is like your first used car you get when you're a teenager, and you, if you can get it to like you know when you're 21, 22, it's like, hey, you know what? Great run. I ran that car into the GD ground, and now I need a big boy car. Yeah, it's time for a big boy microphone. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, what we're. I, I, I'm working on a lot of things here. I'm, I'm going to come in and get one t- temporarily. Really, like you know, I'm so there's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts here when it comes to Judd's microphone. A lot of balls in the air here. A lot of balls in the air. All right. Uh, hey, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for enduring. Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd. <laughs>